What is up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Merp and this is Merp TV and today we are sitting in the A10C Warthog. The jet that has been specifically built around a 30mm cannon and a titanium bathtub. Currently it is 6am in the morning here in Syria and we are on our way to provide air support to one of our outposts down in the mountains. Now there's not much info that we have currently other than that they're being attacked and that they need our immediate air support. So let's head over there and assess the situation ourselves. Right now we are loaded with six Mavericks, six bombs and a shitload of ammo for the cannon. Holy shit. Well, that's the sound of escalation, I guess. I heard him mentioning someone with an RPG on the left side, so apparently there should be some enemy infantry. Honestly, kind of nervous flying into a zone that I do not know anything about, but we'll see. Alright, we do already see a lot of smoke. Uh, this doesn't look good at all. I hope we're not too late. I mean, this thing is really, really slow. The main thing that I'm mostly concerned about are man pads. For the ones that do not know what man pads are, man pads are man portable air defense systems. So in other words, a soldier with a guided rocket launcher that is a threat to low flying aircrafts. They're mostly impossible to spot. They're just sitting somewhere between trees or between buildings waiting for the right moment. And we are currently flying at an altitude where they can get us basically. Uh, but then again, we have to hurry up because there's a lot of smoke already and I don't want to spend too much time just circling around high in the sky to see what is going on. I see a lot of flares already in between trees. And this is what our guys are doing down there just to give me a rough indication of where enemy presence is. Oh, I do see a lot of smoke here at our outpost. And let's just follow this. Oh, look at that. There we go. Now that is 100% an enemy tank that is heading straight for the outpost. And if we're not going to do anything now, our boys will have a very, very bad time down there. And check. Now they gave us a rough indication of where enemy presence is down the hill somewhere in a tree line. They're hiding in between trees. So we're gonna dive down and give them uh, the sound of freedom. <laughs> The sound of the cannon is so iconic and I just can't get enough of that thing, man. I mean, I love flying the Warthog. The only downside is that it's just super slow. But other than that, in my opinion, it's just one of the most fun modules to use for close air support. Now, there's a boatload of tracers going that way and it's not really focused on the ground. So that makes me believe that there's maybe a aircraft or a helicopter somewhere. So let's just turn around and get a closer look of what is happening over there. Oh, 
Oh, I've been circling around for a couple of minutes trying to spot uh, whatever it is that is flying over Morning, there. But so far, I'm unable to spot whatever is flying over there. So I'm just going to use these tracers that the ground units are shooting into the sky as a rough indication of where it's at. And we're going to use the cannon because I don't have any aim nines. Oh, I see him. Holy shit, that was so close, man. There he goes. Boom. All right. Um, I think we did enough work here right now. And we're just going to RTB. Wait, what? Missile launch by air? Uh-oh. I think there is another helicopter somewhere there. And he locked on me. And he got me. Now, I do think we can get the systems back up and running. I hope the engines as well. But I gotta be honest, the chances are very slim that the engines are gonna turn back on. Um, and in that case, we just have to do an emergency landing. I've never been in this situation before. Because I've been flying the Warthog for like two weeks now or so. Uh, so this is kind of nerve-wracking to be fair. But like in any real-life situation, the main goal right now is to just survive this. Uh, so we're just gonna see if we can get the system back online. And the engine's back up and running. I'm really panicking here. I can't even find the APU switch right now. <laughs> oh, there. Now, I do not have any indication of how fast we are going. I'm pretty sure we're losing a lot of speed. The engines are still turning, but they are not putting out any power. And I think before the APU is fully spooled up and the systems are back online, I think we lost already too much speed, so... Now we can count ourselves lucky that we're not behind enemy lines. This is basically our own territory that is being attacked. So uh, landing here is not as stressful as it would be behind enemy lines, obviously. Yeah, no. I don't think the system is going to get back up. Uh, I think we're just screwed here. My main concern in this situation now is that everything is like very uneven. Um... There's not, like, flat fields. I mean, there are flat fields, but they're very small. Oh. Hold on. Yeah, no. This is also gonna take way too long. Uh, I think we should just uh, put our hands together and pray for a safe landing. Altitude, altitude. The terrain is so uneven, though, man. I, I honestly don't think we're gonna make this. I, I hope for the video it does, but... <laughs> Yeah, we're losing a lot of speed and altitude now. Uh, I have to find something very, very quickly. Pull up, pull up. Oh no, that is uneven! No! How in the hell did we survive this? We lost the cover of the fuel port as well. <laughs> Not on the other side though. Well then, that's gonna bring this video to an end and I wanna thank you all for watching. I also wanna thank you all for the kind responses under my previous video, the Hornet video. I wasn't expecting it to be that well received. Uh, I mean, I'm new to this uh, simulation, uh, so thank you so much. I also play this game during my live stream, so if you wanna hang out with me uh, during uh, these DCS live streams or any other games that I'm playing, you are more than welcome on kick.com slash I'll catch you guys on the next one.